Hi guys, it's Miss Miller, and I'm here to teach you how to do, um, how to create a portfolio. So first thing we want to do is I want to tell you what a portfolio is. Portfolio. A portfolio is something that you keep art in. There's all different kinds, but the one that we're going to make is a quick and easy cardboard portfolio. So I'll show you mine. This is my finished portfolio. It says Miss Miller. I've decorated it fully. The whole thing is covered. And I also did the back side. So your portfolio is going to open up like a book. So one side will be connected, one side will open like a book, and there'll be a top and a bottom. The supplies you'll need to create your portfolio are a large piece of cardboard, scissors, or an X-Acto knife or box color cutter, if your parents will allow you to use that. An X-Acto knife, there's different styles. Here is one, I always keep a gummy eraser on the end of it so I don't stab myself. It's a very sharp blade, almost like a knife on one end, and you can usually uh, screw this part on and off so you can replace the blade. Um, and a box cutter is one of those large ones that have the little thing that you push at the top and the razor blade comes out and then you push or pull that thing back in and the razor blade goes back in. Only use sharp tools like this if you're allowed to and if your parents know you're using them. So I'm going to put this back on here to keep myself safe because I can be a klutz. And again, if you do use one of these and you want to know how to keep it safe, find yourself an eraser and just put it on the end so you don't get stabbed. Nice. Uh, oh, so I said scissors, cardboard, and then you need one other thing. And it was the, it's the thing that's going to be able to close it and hold everything inside when you're done, which is string. If you have twine, if you have yarn, if you have that like embroidery thread. Um, so if your mom knits, you probably have yarn. If you do cross stitch, you probably have embroidery yarn or embroidery string. Um, you might just have string or twine laying around the house. Um, and we'll talk more about this in a minute. Okay, so for your large piece of cardboard, go find yourself a cardboard box. It should be free. Maybe you got something delivered from Amazon or your parents picked it up at Safeway. They're like, hey, you guys got extra cardboard? Or sometimes Costco, if your parents go to Costco, lots of free cardboard there. If they just ask for it, they'll give it to you. And if you need an extra big box, they might be able to go in the back and get it for you too. So this used to be an entire box and I cut off all the flaps. So you know the parts that you open up when you're opening up a box and they're smaller flaps, you know, maybe they're like this size and they're attached. You're going to want to cut those off and just be left with the large piece. The large piece that you need is approximately, that means about 22 inches long by 15 inches wide. So the length is the long part, the width is the short part, in this case at least. So this is about 15 inches and this is about 22 inches. If yours is 16 and 20, that's okay. If yours is 14 and 18, I bet you it'll work. So I'll show you about how much space you're gonna need. So if you have a piece of art that you made, 
you're going to want it to fit inside of one of, if you were to fold this in half, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment, you want this piece of art. This is like an average, you know, eight by 10 or nine by something, 12 piece of paper, very average sketchbook size piece of paper or that lined college ruled paper that you write on. That's kind of the average size sheet of paper that you'll be making art on at home, most likely. So that should fit on one side of your cardboard with space all the way around. You don't want it to be so big that it's sticking out on the side because it'll crunch and crumble and it'll ruin the art. And the whole point of having a portfolio is putting art inside of it to keep it safe. So let me show you what I mean by a portfolio keeps your art safe. So I've created my portfolio. It has strings on the top. It has strings on the side. And it has strings on the bottom. I have piles of artwork that students have made over time. I did this one this year, if you remember that. We've got the name paintings from sixth grade. I've got uh, the shoe drawings from the Zentangle project two years ago. I don't know who did this one, but it ended up pretty good. Dale. Um, the complimentary color warm and cool project. I've got mixing browns and all of these are about, about the same size, roughly. If I were to take all of this loose artwork and I wanted to keep it safe somewhere, that's what my portfolio is for. So here's my portfolio, open it, put it all in. None of this comes out the top or the side, none of it is folded. Everything should fit in there with a little bit of space all the way around. I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna tie the bottom strings together. I'm gonna tie the middle strings together. And the way that I'm tying these is kind of like how you tie your shoes, just with the little bunny ears. And then I'm gonna do the top ones. All right, so now look at all that art. It fits in there. It's tied on the bottom, on the side, and on the top, and it doesn't come out now because not only is it tightly tied, closed, but also if it does slope down, this will stop it from falling out. If you have any really short art, it might fall out that way, but otherwise, all of this artwork is safe and clean, and I can go put it someplace where I can look at it later. A portfolio can be useful for trying to get into an advanced art uh, program, whether it's here at McGee or off when you end up doing um, high school, because they have a lot of honors placements in high school for art and drama and dance and all that kind of stuff. And this is an example of all of your artwork. If you just want to keep your artwork safe for you, if you're making someone as a surprise, you can keep it in there and they won't see it. You can um, also, when you get older, apply for college and you'll have a portfolio of artwork that is not damaged, safe and clean in your portfolio that you made five years ago with Miss Miller. And uh, you can present this or take pictures of your artwork to try to get into college if you wanna take art classes there as well. So the portfolio keeps your art clean, keeps your art safe, and has a collection of art that you can show me or your other teachers in the future to get into advanced placement classes or pretty much anything, okay? All right, let's go back to how to make this thing. If you have a yardstick 
or a ruler or a measuring tape, you want to measure that cardboard. So hopefully you've cut it out. Oh good, mine's about 22 inches roughly and about 15 inches tall. So now what you're going to do is if mine is 22 inches long, you want to find the middle of 22. So what is 22 divided by 2? Or if I put that another way, what is half of 22? Do, 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 do. That's right, 11. Now, if you only had enough cardboard to make 10, um, 20 inches or 18 inches, what's half of 20? That'd be 10. What's half of 18? That'd be 9. If you have a tricky one, um, you might have to do it on the calculator on your phone. So next, I'm going to tell you that you need to find that, for me, 11 or halfway down and make a line all the way down as straight as you can. So 11 inches from here to here, all the way down. So you can see the line that I drew right there. I'll draw it in a little nicer. So I used a black marker. This indicates halfway down from top to bottom. Now you're gonna do something called scoring. And I know that sounds like you're scoring in a football game or something like that, but scoring is when you cut something, but only partially, halfway through or less, scoring. So if you have that razor blade or if you have scissors, you're going to cut down that line, but don't push so hard it cuts all the way through. So I'm going to show you how to do that two different ways. If you're allowed to use a razor blade or a box cutter, and only if you're allowed to, that line that you just made, put it down on a flat surface. Do not do it on your leg. Um, or your or your lap or your thighs because you might cut yourself very badly. Whether it's with a razor blade or the scissors, you have to be careful. So with the razor blade, you're going to put it down safely on some sort of table, um, something, some kind of hard surface. Don't do it on um, your mom's couch because if you cut through it and you make a big hole, guess who's getting grounded for a month? So. You're going to take that razor blade and you're going to have it on a nice hard surface that is not your legs and not fabric. Maybe if you have a, a hard floor or a desk, something like that, maybe even the kitchen table. Take that razor blade and you're just going to lightly cut all the way down. And don't push too hard because you don't want it to go all the way through. The other way to do that is if you have scissors, not little kid scissors real scissors. You're in middle school now. You're probably allowed to use real scissors, most likely. You're going to open those scissors. You're going to be careful not to cut yourself. You're going to take one side of the scissors, okay? So here's the sharp edge. Luckily, scissors aren't that sharp, so you'll probably be okay. That line that you drew that was halfway across, you're going to drag the scissors from top again, on a hard surface that is not fabric or your leg, and you're gonna drag it down that line nice and straight, as straight as you can get it. By the way, every student that has done this so far, they have done it well, and it was okay. So uh, don't be afraid, and just go careful and slow. Do not cut all the way through. I don't wanna see your scissors or your razor blades sticking all the way through, because then you're just gonna ruin your cardboard. So cut it down, score it, cutting it partially through, not all the way through. As soon as you score it and you try to bend it, you will see it will immediately bend very easily just by cutting through that top layer of cardboard. So that part's done. Now you have cardboard that kind of looks like a book, all right? So you have a front, an inside, and a back. Wonderful. Now, if you have two smaller pieces of cardboard, but when you put them together, it makes about 22 by 15, 
all you're going to do is just take those two pieces of cardboard and tape them with either packing tape or that sticky white masking tape. And you're going to tape top to bottom, flip it over, and then tape again, top to bottom. And that'll work just the same as having one piece of cardboard that you scored, but it's just the hinge is now just created by the tape. And you need to, need to, need to, must put tape on the outside and the inside or two things will happen. Number one, it'll just fall apart. And number two, when you put your art in there, the art will stick to the tape. So you have to put the tape on the inside to secure it that way and put tape on the outside to secure it that way. So that's if you have smaller cardboard that, that can't be folded into a larger piece. You need to tape them together to make the larger piece. So I'll go back to this. Now you're going to make three holes. Now listen carefully. Three holes that will end up making six. What? Okay, I'm gonna tell you what I mean. So now you have the side that you scored. It opens and closes. This side does not need a hole. The side that opens needs a hole. The top needs a hole and the bottom needs a hole. These are what you're gonna tie your string to so that it'll close and it'll stay secured. If you put a hole here, you don't need a string. It's already closed because you didn't cut all the way through it or you attached it together with your tape. So what I'm gonna do, again, carefully, and on a hard, flat surface that is not my legs, I'm gonna put it down on my wooden desk. I'm gonna take my scissors, they're open again, and halfway in between each corner, so this is the long way here, and then here's the short side, and the short side, about an inch from the top, I'm gonna poke a hole. So here's a corner, here's a corner. I measured it and it's right in between. Don't put it too close to the edge or your string will rip out. So about an inch down, take your scissors or your razor blade and you're gonna put it down on a hard surface that is not your leg and you're going to poke it through and then actually you'll push it a little bit harder once you lift it up and you'll see that the blade goes all the way through. It doesn't need to go all the way to the handle, just partially through. And then you want to twist it. And the reason you're twisting it is you're making it actually shaped like a hole and not just a slit that this, that this would make. Okay. You want it to make an actual hole. So I'm turning that blade. Boom. I do that two more times. So again, this thing is closed. Now we're gonna do the top and the bottom. I've got my scissors. I'm not gonna cut myself because I'm mature and I can handle things like this. And I'm gonna put this down in between this corner and this corner, right in the middle, about an inch from the top. Pop through that cardboard and start to twist it around. And then you'll see you'll have a nice hole nice hole. If you look through it, you can see light coming through it. Okay. So I can see you actually technically me. Then I'm going to do it one more time on this side. So I'm going to put it down, poke it through, twist it around. You have just made three holes. One, two, three. So in the middle of where it opens, in the middle of the top and in the middle of the bottom. When you open it, Ta-da, you have six holes. One here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Now you need string. How long should your string be? Good question. You need six pieces of string, one for each hole, and you are going to cut these approximately 10 inches long. If you do not have a ruler, you can try to measure with your hand 
Everyone is a different height, so this might be pretty different for each person. But for me, as a very short adult, a lot of us are the same height. And I could say from about a little less than halfway down my hand, all the way down to my elbow, sorry, I got paint on me, that is about 10 inches. 10 inches is wider than your face, longer than your face, not quite as long as your shoulders, that's how long 10 inches is. If you have a ruler, that's 12 inches, so it's a little shorter than your ruler. So you need six pieces of string, yarn, twine, dental floss, whatever you have that's like string, 10 inches long, you need six of them. One for each hole you just created. You might need to pause this video go get your string, measure it, and cut six 10-inch strings because now I'm going to tell you what to do with them. So you might need to pause me now. So I'm going to show you this once or twice and then you just have to do all the other ones on your own. It's exactly the same thing for all of them. I take my string and this is kind of an old-fashioned trick from when people would sew a lot. Um, but you're gonna take your string and because the string is fuzzy and the hole has kind of cardboard fuzzies on it, if you do this, it'll make the fuzzies go down. And I, I'm sticking it through one of the holes and you need to pay attention to this. Okay, so have me large on your screen. You're going to have one side of this string long and one side a little shorter. And then I'm going to cross the short side across the long side. So here's my long side, here's my short side, I'm crossing them. Now you've created a little bit of a loop here. I'm gonna take the short one and wrap it around the big one and put it through the hole. So this is also a little bit like tying your shoes. And then you're gonna pull it tight you still have a long one and a short one. You're gonna do that three times because if you only do it once, it'll undo right away. If you only do it twice, it might unravel. Three times makes it nice and solid. So now I'm gonna take the short one. I'm gonna cross it across the long one and that'll create a little loop. I'm gonna wrap that around the big string, the long string, tuck it in through the hole, pull it tight. Boom. I'm going to do it one more time. String, cross, tuck, pull it through that loop you just created, pull it tight. Now how you're going to test this to see if you did it correctly is you're just going to pick up the whole thing by that string. By the time you're done, you're going to have one string that's long, one string that's a little bit short. I'm going to do this one more time for you because this video is turning out very long. 10 inches of string. Get a little saliva on there. Now you've made all the fuzzies go away. Stick it through that hole you made with the scissors. One side's a little shorter, one side's a lot longer. I'm gonna cross it against the large one loop it in through the hole, pull it tight, do it two more times. So it's three times for every single hole with all six strings. Cross it across, wrap it around, stick it through that loop you made, pull it tight, third time, cross the big one with the little one, wrap the little one around the big one, stick it through the loop, pull that short one, Long one is left, test it out, good, nice and strong. Gonna do that all the way around so you have six strings. When you are done, you can get white paper, maybe something from your sketchbook or something like that. I just have this sitting here so I'm gonna use it. Um, I also have copier paper, so it's just white paper, paper that you wanna use in your printer or something like that if you have that at home. Get some glue, 
put it on the outside of your portfolio, fill it, do the same thing to the other side. White paper, glue it to the portfolio, white paper, glue it to the portfolio. I'll tell you why. You have to decorate this. Your name must be visible on this. You decorate both sides. This is worth 20 extra credit points. You can use one of your art bingo um, selections to decorate this as well if you would like. So just off of this one thing, you can get 20 points extra credit. And if you decorate it, let's say you do, you know, uh, markers and paint, then that can be two of your art bingo for next week. Um, so that's what I did with this one. I put a piece of paper here. You can actually see the seam here. I glued it down. I put a piece of paper here. I glued that down. I let it dry. I pushed on it really hard so it's nice and flat, flipped it over, did it again. White paper here, white paper here. Some other students that have white acrylic paint, painted the outside white, let it dry, and then, uh, and then painted it or markered it or drew on it, however they wanted to design it. So if you try to put bright colors on top of that dark cardboard color, it's not gonna come out very bright. It won't come out, um, it won't look that good. So if you try to decorate this, it's not gonna look great. That's why you need to put uh, paper on top or paint it white, wait for it to dry and then decorate it. And the one thing that you have to do is make sure your name is on it. I will check these for those of you that have created them when we go back to school in person so I can see all the art you made. Um, you have to make one if you don't have something that already holds all of your art. Some of you guys had folders. Some of you guys had large sketchbooks. If you already have those, you do not have to make this. If you want to make this because you want 20 points extra credit, good for you. Um, please email me, leanne.miller at tusd1.org if you have any questions. And uh, that was about 30 minutes, so I'm going to let you go. Have fun making your portfolio. Remember, you need string on the bottom, on the side, and on the top. Scoring is when you cut something but not all the way through, and you have to decorate the outside. Okay, guys? Thank you so much. Have a great day. I'm really excited to see how these turn out because mine turned out really cool. And I have all your art inside and some of mine too.